So welcome back to Crack and Flip, guys. This is Richard. So we did the cracking, so I think now it's time to go to the flipping. So this is the first video in the series where I follow all the cards that I cracked open and um, that whole case, basically. And our goal, or actually, our, yeah, our goal is on the screen right now. This is the goal we got to make up off six boxes. Once again, it's this low because of Rudy. I'm a Patreon of Rudy's. From Alpha Investments, so seventy nine ninety nine per box. So that is our goal right there. Um, I opened all the boxes. You haven't seen the videos for all the boxes yet. Um, I'm going to spread those out. But I'm going to start with this opening financial video to discuss some things and where to start. Like, really, it's, it's I was kind of thinking about where to start. So let me kind of show off what things look like. This is all... The rares, these two stacks right here, are all the rares and mythics. <laughs> right here, all double sleeved, every foil. I'm not going to show you the good cards because I don't want to ruin anything. But yeah, all all foils right there, all double sleeved because of the warping issue. I'm trying to give these cards the best shot they have to survive by double sleeving them right away. And then a special pile right here. This, I mean, you gotta love a pile like this, guys. This is every Merfolk Mistbinder, Silver Gill Adept, and then, of course, Chupacabra and Legion Lieutenant. All of those guys. That's a lot of dollar cards right there. And play sets galore for that, and that is gonna go a long way to our total. I don't include. The uncommons and my totals in the video just to save time. Also, like they're below two dollars, and I usually only do two dollars anyway. But yeah, I mean this is gonna go a long way. I haven't counted them out yet, but roughly a dollar each. You do play sets of that, you're gonna be doing pretty well. So it's gonna go. I'm gonna give a total of what I've sold so far once I've sold everything. And so this next, the second video I'm gonna do for financials. That's where I'm gonna have the total of so far. Now. There are, at least for me, three periods that I look at where I need to start selling things. And the first one is that Saturday or that Friday of cracking everything open. I got to really look at some of the cards, um, especially the, the cards that are in that dollar range is what we're looking at. These are the cards that I'm really going to look at first because I since I opened up all those... Uh, boxes and stuff like that, uh, now I have enough to make play sets. So I'm really looking at those cards to see what I can sell as a play set and what might not make it. Starting with like Prime Primal Storm, Path to Metal, The Climb, Storm the Vault, things like that. So I really looked at those cards and really thought to myself, what is worth selling, what's worth keeping? And the reason I do that is because these cards will eventually go down to uh, below a dollar and below 50 cents and after that not even a play set is really going to make your money back so you really got to look at those dollar rares that are going to crash in value and sell play sets as soon as you can as fast as you can in order to make up money that's basically just lying around that you probably won't ever recoup so one of the things i looked at radiant destiny um i mean if you're going to play tribal then you probably have lords anyway so to have an additional lore that costs more than the actual uh, lore itself, I don't really see being played. So I quickly posted mine and sold mine for about 120 130 And same thing with some, some stuff or tough tough sells, like Profane uh, Procession here. I'm, I'm not going to get rid of that for, one, for 114 I'm a, I'll hold on to that until it rotates, basically. But things like Primal Dawn... Of course, I got rid of um, Hunger. I'm getting rid of Primal Tide. S uh, Sage Horn right here, I'm keeping for a little bit longer. Just to see how Dinos do. Just because it's it's a well-done card. Especially if you do it in a Rage. Dino deck, it's not going to fare too well. But in a Rage, Strictly deck, it it's going to do some damage. Path to Discovery, same thing. And when it comes to selling... Dollar cards, never sell on TCG Player. Never sell dollar cards on TCG Player or anything lower because of the fact 
that there's no sell as for option. So someone could buy one card from you, and then you're just out money. Because of shipping, because of fees, you're not going to make your money on a dollar card. So I have to go to eBay and post them, which takes a little bit more time. Like Admiral's Orders here, I sold that as well. Um, yeah, it takes a little bit more time, so you try to get on that as fast as you can. But yeah, there's several low-dollar cards. And this is kind of like where I stopped at 50 cents, because then you get into $2 range profit, and it's really hard when you add shipping into that, add fees into that. It's not really worth it. So I just hold on to it for the chance that something like, you know, a Paladin of Atonement here will be worth something more. Okay, guys, so this is the stack of um, rares and, and mythics that I'm going to be selling right away. And are already posted. Some of these have already sold. The goal is to sell them by Sunday. Um, I'll tell you why uh, later on. So Primal Storm was kind of a tough call, but it's at $2 right now. So I I wanted to get at least some of them out the door. I opened one every case, so I have quite a few they also had some from pre-release kits, so I decided, you know what, let me sell a playset. Just because it's not the best dino, so pro and it does whiff sometimes, so yeah, not, not going to do that. Immortal Sun, this was kind of a tough decision, but it's going to be strictly a commander card to me. Um, I don't think you're going to see it in standard, and so because of that, I feel like the price is already set. And commander prices move really slow, so it's really tough to be like, let me hold on to a $6 card. Actually, this is like a $7 card. Hold on to it, maybe it'll go up, and, and maybe by then it's going to drop down to, you know, $3. So I decided to, you know, just go out and sell the Immortal Sun. Um, the Gateway. Yeah, I, I really hope someone would play this card, but after looking at it and after really thinking about it, Exiling five cards, that means you're five cards behind with Romnot Bread. And now Pirate Aggro, now blue, uh, bl Red Black Aggro coming out. Being far cards, five cards down is not the best position. And I really think that in the format currently, this isn't the best. So selling it at its current price right now, to me, is the best bet. There's Radiant Destiny, like I said. Um, Dawn. Same thing with Dawn. Not the best dino, so why not? Primal Tide. Emerald's Orders. Um, basically a do-nothing card, man. You, you ha basically have to be doing everything after your attack phase, and what, what's really your opponent going to be doing? Um, so, it's yeah, it's not really a good card. Not really the best. Like you, Especially if it's in blue. Like, if, if it was in a different color and it did something odd like that... I'd be down for it, but because it's in blue, you have negate, you have unsummon. Like, there's no need for for a card like this. Path to discovery. Uh, I just think just not room in decks for it, so I got rid of that as well. Same thing here with the dryad. Um, just not my favorite, so might as well kick it free as fast as I can. Uh, tough call for this guy, the lawbringer. Especially it's a mythic. Mythics are really tough. Like, I'm always undecided when it comes to mythics, but. It's a tough, tough casting cost. And I saw some decks already at Star City Games. Um, some other deck techs. And, um, you know, God Pharaoh's Gift. Uh, other blue-white controls are out there. And they're playing... They're playing like a Carnage Tyrant. They're not playing the Lawbringer. So I, th I think they're playing other bigger creatures versus this card. And so I feel like probably selling right now where it's at... Around four dollars is probably the best bet. Try not to give away too much, but I kind of have to show what I've got. Primal Calamity. It's a commander card. That's it. There's there's cheaper dinosaurs. I mean, getting to nine mana. If you can get to nine mana, you should be ruling the board with something else. You should have some smaller or less costly creatures if you're getting to nine mana. And if you're getting to nine mana. Even in a ramp deck, like I said, you're swarming the field or you're doing something wrong. Um, so I think this is just Commander. And not even a good Commander card. I feel like people just want to play with it because it's such an interesting card. Storm the Vault. Just don't see why Blue Red would be running this currently. Maybe someday it'll be something. But for me, it's just not, not quite there. Not quite worth it. I might catch a lot of grief for this one. 
I'll probably catch a lot of grief for this one, but Rekindling Phoenix reminds me too much of Glorybringer. Just too much of Glorybringer. Glorybringer is a great card, don't get me wrong, but Glorybringer was around $14 or $12 on that opening weekend. The decks around red were just not running Glorybringers. They just weren't doing that at the time. So um, it kind of fell to the wayside. It kind of dropped all the way down to $5. I think the highest it peaked after that was like 7 And because of that, I, this, this card kind of reminds me of that. Because I don't think it beats Glorybringer. Watching that Star City Games, yeah, it kind of brought up a stalemate. But at the same time, it, it was getting killed and then... Its token was getting like abraded, shocked. So it's one of those things of it's not as immortal as you think, and it just kind of gets dead in the water a lot. Like where it's just holding position, it's not attacking because it doesn't have vigilance. So you're just sitting there trying to block, and eventually people get through, and you just kind of stall the game out, but not in your favor. So, like I said, it just reminds me too much of Glorybringer. It's a great card, don't get me wrong. But I think that later on in the format, it'll probably become even better, especially once Glorybringer rotates. But by then, I kind of look at it as Angel of Invention. Angel of Invention took off in um, Blue-White Control and other decks, token decks, and it only jumped up to like $9. It only jumped up to like 10 at its peak and then rested like at 9 So where are we right now with this card? We're at 15 so to me, if this peaks later on in the format, down the road after a couple sets, then it's just going to go to 9. So I already lost money. So I feel like selling at 15 is probably the best bet for me. If you have a copy of this, then hold on to it. Hold on to it, it starts going down. But beware, when a card like this crashes, like Glorybringer crashed, you're going to watch yourself post it at $8, leave, come back, and it'd be at 6 And then you're posting it at 6 and then you come back, come back, it's at five seventy-five. Like, you don't want to get that scaling when it comes to a card like this. Especially when you were looking at $12. You're looking at $15. And now you're chasing 8 So, tough call. I might catch a lot of grief for that. But to me, it's the best call to do. We'll see as time goes on if I was wrong. It has made appearances in Star City Games, like I said, against Glorybringer. And Glorybringer won. To me, Glorybringer like, took it out every time. So... That's kind of where I stand on, on Rekindling Phoenix, which is definitely the toughest call I had to make. Every other card I'm holding on to, this is a good example of a card. I do not have faith in this card, but it's under $3. I will not sell any Mythic under $3. Just because the fact that if it does spike, it's a Mythic, it's going to go near 10 or even beyond. So because of that, don't ever sell any Mythic below $3. Just keep it. Just keep it. You never know what's going to happen with that. But yeah, guys, that's what I'm selling so far. I'll let you guys know how I make out on another video. And then probably update again once um, cards start sliding or going up, depending on all the YouTube deck techs that are out there. Gold, um, MTG Goldfish is a good one. Strictly Better uh, Magic is another one. So yeah, I just keep watching deck techs, seeing what people are playing, and deciding where the trend is going. So... Yep, so that's it for the first video. Like I said, stay tuned for other ones when it comes to the financial side of all these cards I opened for my case. And you guys all have a good one, okay? Take care.